everyone welcome back to another live class um, if you are watching the replay I will leave timestamps below where you can skip ahead to whatever section um, you need to but if you were here for the live say hello in the comments below I would love to um, find out where you're from where you're painting from who you're painting with um, all that sort of things um, I'm just going to get out my paints and get ready and feel free to live chat in the comments. I am, I'm excited for this one. This picture, um, of the palm tree was actually, it was posted in one of the online paint night groups that I'm a part of and just as inspiration and I was like this is an amazing photo and I asked um, permission to use it to teach with um, so yeah I'm really excited for this one I love the colors and I'm a sucker for uh, just beach scenes I feel like I do way too many of them but I love them I feel like beach and flowers and animals I do a lot of animals too these ones aren't even recent, but there's a lot of animals on that one, um, on the wall, but. Let me see. Let me get my paints out. Let's see. I'm going to pull up. My supply list just so I make sure that I'm getting all of the colors that I said I was going to be using. That's helpful. Um, okay, let's see. White, black. Oops, that is a violet. That is not black. I have the, um, the Hippie Crafter acrylics and I do this every single time. The the black and the violet are so close in color, I always end up picking up, not always, but I'll pick up the violet and be like, that's not the color, it's not the color I'm looking for. <laughs> um, let's see, white, black, raw umber, yes, gotta love my raw umber. Uh, you could use other browns too, like a burnt umber. If you don't have brown, you could make brown with the primary colors, which is your red, yellow, and blue. And then you could just darken it up with black. Um, pretty much just have primary colors. Um, yellow, red, blue. And theoretically, you don't need the red. Um, but... For those of you who don't have brown or anything like that, um, you can help. It'll be used to warm up the sand color. So we will be using it for our sand. So red, yellow, phthalo blue, and the the blue, the yellow I'm using is just medium blue, just standard yellow. Um, and then because we're doing. Um, because we are doing more of like a pretty, like a pretty blue, um, for our, uh, what am I trying to say? Pregnant brain. For our <sighs> ocean. There we go. For our ocean. Um, it's a lot prettier than it, you know, it's very more of the green blues, um, we're going to be using our phthalo blue instead of ultramarine blue. I'm going to look at the picture here real fast, though, and see if I want to get a different blue for the sky. Hello from Michigan. Hello. Welcome in. Florence, have you ever painted before? Or maybe is this your first time painting with me? Or have you painted with me before? Sometimes I don't always recognize the names because sometimes there's a lot of them. Um, yeah, I think, I think phthalo blue and then I'm just going to get out, um, I 
have this turquoise blue that I love. And I honestly haven't used it a whole lot because um, I've been using my Hippie Crafter acrylics, but I have a couple different like turquoises I might use. So I have this, um, let's see what color is this, turquoise green. It's almost empty, but this is the color. And then I have this other bright aqua green. So I'm not totally sure which one I'll use. I just want to make sure that I can really um, get that vibrant, pretty, like oceany color. And it's in, it's in both the sky and the ocean so okay um let's see about 20 minutes and let's see I'm trying to figure out where I want to place my palm tree See the comments here. Where'd the comments go? No, no comments. I am super excited because I am very, very close to meeting our new baby girl. She is due ah. Uh, the end of September so like the 30th but secretly I'm hoping that she comes a little bit before that or on time versus late because she's late one I don't think any pregnant woman wants to be late but also my birthday is on the 4th and I don't want to be in the hospital on my birthday. Obviously, it would be fine if I was. But <laughs> um, hi, Tanya. Um, question. Hello. I don't have teal or turquoise. Will I be able to mix them? Yeah, I would suggest using your phthalo blue white and then some green so like any like I apologize for any noise outside um I would use if you have like a viridian or like a a dark deep green um just play around with some of those colors and you'll probably you'll probably get close to I would say this color this looks a lot well this looks a lot bluer on screen than it is. This is this is a lot greener in real life, um, which means this is looks really blue. Um, yeah, I would I would play around with the colors. Play around with your phthalo blue, your green, and then um, and then your white. Make sure to lighten it up with white. Um, fairly early in the mixing process because it's going to be really hard to figure it's going to be really hard to see a turquoise color when it's super dark 
but even then even if it's not super turquoise it's still gonna it's still gonna be a pretty painting um with the other types like just even if you just had phthalo blue um but yeah that would be my and actually that's what i used to do um but i always like i've always liked using like the bright aqua colors i apologize for the uh chainsaw or i don't even know what are, the, what are those i think maybe they're cutting wood um we <laughs> there it goes again uh we have a, a fire truck station literally across the street um and it's a training fire station so they do all sorts of things and practice with their chainsaws and ladders and yelling and you know if you've painted with me before you would have you would have heard it <laughs> but okay um and for patrons i don't forget that i posted the um the traceable um in my patreon so if you are not sure about placement or sizing or you don't want to draw straight lines or whatever the case is that you would like to use a traceable for um i do provide that for um patrons and supporters of the channel through patreon so um if you would like a traceable that is available um on my patreon I can get a link here. And here's the link for that, just in case anybody is here and didn't know that I do that. I do that for all of my live classes. So um, it's just a gift that I like to provide for my, um, my classes. For anyone who that, um, that wants it. I'm trying to figure out <laughs> I think this is good. Another good trick that you could use, um, at least maybe for the like horizon line, um, is you could use tape. Um, you could use tape to get a straight line. That's also an option if you're not a huge fan of you know drawing lines and things like that. Hi Gloria. Hi Janet. Janet, are you painting along this time? I haven't uh I haven't seen you in a while. It's always nice to have some friendly faces on here. Um and Gloria, you haven't joined us in a while either. I hope everything is going well for you guys. I am excited to paint. I'm always excited to paint. I think I say that every single time. Like, oh, I'm so excited for this one. But, yeah, I'm. I get to. I get to paint. <laughs> I'm always excited to paint. Yeah. 
I'm excited. It's very quiet in the chat tonight. Um, oh, I missed Karen. Hi, Karen. You are a recent Patreon, or patron, aren't you? Um, new to acrylics. Karen, did you do other acrylics, or did you do other forms of painting um, before this, or are you new to, like, painting in general? Um, Gina from Trinidad, hello. First time painting with me. Awesome. Well, welcome, welcome. I always like to hear. I have new new followers and new friends to paint with. sure I have everything. Uh, watercolor painted 30 years ago. Like, what, like, you stopped painting, like you painted 30 years ago and then you stopped painting, or you've continued, like you started painting, like you've been painting for 30 years of watercolor. I just recently did, started watercolor. I've attempted to keep it all in this book. Um, and I am very, very green at watercolor, so don't laugh at me, but I did this last July, so last month, and it was like 4th of July themed colors kind of going on, and then this month I did this little guy. Which is adorable, I think. But, um, I've just been playing around. I haven't done, I haven't had time to do any, like, watercolor tutorials. Kind of like you do acrylic ones here. Which I want to do, because I love acrylic. I mean, I love watercolor. I'm falling in love with watercolor. But, it's, it's very new to me. And I literally feel like I don't have any idea what I'm doing. But I have a lot of acrylic background, which I think helps. And drawing background. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I've been painting kindness rocks. Oh. Very. How are you so good? Um, practice? I've been painting for a while. Painting for a while. And my husband's really encouraging. My mom was really encouraging. Um, just, I don't know, just practice. I mean, I, I think I paint at least once a week teaching. Sometimes I'll paint um, for fun. Rarely, but sometimes I'll paint for fun. Um, or for a commission or something like that, but just consistency. Um, Gloria says, nice watercolor painting. I was thinking of doing um, the book pads for acrylics for save yeah, for space saving. Yeah, you just have to get, um, I have a link for this in my store, I think, my Amazon store. If not, remind me and I'll go put it in there. Um, but I've used it for watercolor and the paper is really nice in that it like it's still straight you know um and granted i didn't do the whole thing i just did a little bit up here and like but it didn't it's really thick um and i feel like it would be probably really good for um acrylic too um i would say maybe maybe gesso it so that the paper doesn't soak up as much water, but, um, hi Stacy, Georgia girl, first time painting with you, excited, yay, I'm glad you're here, 
I have a couple new patrons here, which is exciting because we are doing our um, patron giveaway today or tonight. Today, whatever time it is for you. <laughs> tonight, probably, for most people. Um, and which, if for anyone who doesn't know, um, in my Patreon, I like to just thank my patrons every month by doing like a raffle art supply giveaway thing. Um, so sometimes it's paint, sometimes it's canvas paper or palette knives. Um, tonight it's going to be sponge daubers um, because in the next few months we are going to be using sponge daubers, which I call them sponge daubers because we used to call them that in face painting, but I think there's sponges, art, sponge on a stick, but whatever, sponge daubers. Um, we're going to be using these for actually you see what we're painting. So these two um, are future classes, future life classes, and we're using it for the pumpkin. So sneak peek for the pumpkin. Um, that one's going to be in October. So that is what one of you patrons will win tonight. Um, so stay tuned for that. But yeah. Um, I don't really think I have any announcements really. But I'll go through announcements and supplies in a minute when we kind of switch over. But... For those who have experience in both watercolor and acrylics, which one do you prefer? I'm most comfortable in acrylics, but I think if I had all the right tools, I may or may not like watercolor more. I don't know. I think they're very different. They're very different. But, hello. Welcome, welcome. Um, did you use tape for the borders? I was wondering about the pads. Thank you, please let me know. Um, about to order. Yeah, I will, I'll look, um, Gloria, I will look in my Amazon store and um, make sure that it's there. Cause I, I have it obviously and I like it. I haven't used it for acrylics yet. Um, I don't know, I have a, I have, it comes in a three pack, so I might use the other one for acrylics. Um, but, um, I did use tape. Um, I used just normal tape. Um, I would say probably get washi tape, which I have yet to get, um, but washi tape is better. Although, I don't, yeah, I would get washi tape, because it does, the, even the painter's tape kind of sticks to the paper, um, which is why I didn't like using the canvas paper versus the canvas like pad um i always preferred the actual canvas pad because it was canvas material and i could use tape on it willy-nilly and not have to worry about it like ripping the paper um hi i'm cindy hi cindy uh what paintbrushes are we using we will go over that in a little bit um we have about a minute of chatting and then um we're gonna get on to our class and everything. Um, hello from Tennessee. I'm excited to paint. Maybe that's what, okay. I had a patron, I think if either patron or just someone that was talking and they said I, they liked my singing and I was like I don't remember singing in that but I do that a lot where I'm just like excited and <laughs> and I like half sing anyways I apologize if I'm weird I was a theater major um <laughs> okay I will see you on the other side Hello, hello, and welcome back to another live class. We are going to go ahead and jump right in with our supplies and announcements um, and Patreon giveaway. So uh, for supplies, I have my 11 by 14 canvas. This is a stretch canvas, so I will be painting the sides, top and bottom so that I can hang it right on the wall. 
Um, I have my acrylic paints, which the colors I will be using is my white, my black, my raw umber, which is just a dark brown. You could use a lighter brown or make your own brown with the primary colors if you would like to, if you don't have brown, and then just darken it with black. Um, and then I have my red, yellow, and blue. The blue I'm using is phthalo blue because it's a bit of a um, warmer blue. It's got a little bit more of the greenish color versus ultramarine has a little bit more of bluer, cooler tones. Um, if you do not have phthalo blue, I would just say to add a little bit of green to your ultramarine blue. Um, and that might help just give it that warmness of it. Um, and then the other color that we are going to be using, I haven't decided which one I'm going to be using. Um, but I have these two different like turquoise aqua colors. Um, this is very much a turquoise green. It's a turquoise blue, turquoise green. Um, and then this one is a lot greener. It's aqua, bright aqua green. Um, so you can see um, right here, there's a little bit more of that bright greenish color. Um, and kind of along the, the base of the sky. Um, but honestly, it doesn't have to look like the picture. Um, so if you want to try to get it as close as possible, just use the colors you have um, and just go for it. If it doesn't look exactly the same, that's okay. It's honestly, unless you spent hours, days on a painting, it's really, really hard to get it to look exactly like a picture. Um, so just with that in mind, we are using this picture for inspiration for our painting and not trying to replicate it exactly, okay? Uh, so those are the colors that we will be using. I'm using acrylics. Uh, you'll need a, uh, you'll need your water, your paper towel, and your palette. Optional things are tape to get a clean uh, line for your horizon line. So often, more often than not, I will paint my sky in, and then if if I don't have mountains or anything like that, that can kind of help break up the straight line, I will grab some tape and I will just put it on there. And then I will do my whatever um, bottom here I have, whether that's water or, you know, any anything, any, you know, landscape. Um, in this case, it's my ocean. I will do my ocean and then I'll just peel it off, okay? So that is an option and is a very helpful option. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I do have a Patreon where you can have access to my complete archive of past exclusive tutorials um, as well as uh, live class traceables. So I normally have traceables for my Patreon classes too, but as a thank you to all of my patrons, I do have live class traceables for all of my live classes in my patreon so if you are interested in that i will leave a link right now in case anybody wants that um it's honestly it's helpful for some and others don't need it so if you are comfortable drawing um the the landscape that we're doing at any given point that is great um but some people don't like it. <laughs> um, so I provide it in my Patreon for you guys. Um, let's see. I have my next paint night um, in two weeks. It's Foggy Mountains and that one's going to be really fun. Um, so make sure to go to my live class like section on YouTube and I'll have all of the classes that I'm that are coming up. Um, with the exception of there's two premiere classes um, that if you see behind me, um, you'll see two classes, um, which is my pumpkin and my, um, my bouquet, um, my abstract bouquet. Those are going to be premiere classes. Um, so it, it'll pretty much act like this. It'll act like a normal class. 
Um, but I will be live in the comments and the picture here will be a video so that you can, um, you won't be interactive, you won't be able to interact with me personally, um, but I will be in the comments being able to answer all your questions. So that is the only thing, um, and that, for those of you who don't know, I am 34 and a half weeks pregnant, um, and so that's, that's to help me kind of take a little bit of time off, maybe FaceTime off, um, so that I can spend time with my family. Um, so yeah, she's due the end of September, which is really exciting, um, but because of that, I'm trying to still have content for you guys, okay? Um, I think that's all of the announcements. I'm going to go ahead and do our Patreon giveaway real fast. Um, and that's just a gift for, um, to say thank you for all my patrons who support me and make these free classes possible for you all. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, give me one second. Where is it? There we go. Okay. So we have this and I have all my patrons in here. Um, if you don't see your name, it's be probably because you didn't, um, you didn't sign up to have, uh, rewards. So if you want to be in the next one, make sure that you have your address in the Patreon. Okay. And here we go. Let's see. You'll be winning the, um, sponge daubers and it is Sue, Sue Hudson. Yay! All right, so Sue, I will be sending you the pack of sponge droppers, which we will be using for our, let's see, we will be using for our October class. Um, so if you don't have those, now you do. Um, yeah, so that's exciting. I will go ahead and send that over to you. Congratulations, thank you for all your support. Um, I really, really appreciate it all. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so to start off, if you do not have a traceable, that is totally fine. I will be going over the basic shapes um, of everything, of the placement and everything for our class. Um, I would suggest doing it in paint though, rather than a pencil, because then you won't have to worry about markings on your canvas um, but use whatever you're comfortable with if you want to draw it on with a pencil I would say use a maybe a colored pencil or something like that that's not gonna have graphite in it because sometimes if you push too hard with a graphite pencil um, it'll actually it'll change the color of your paint when you're painting over it um, or if you're painting over a large section of it it'll like It'll smear it and it'll mix in with your paint. So I would suggest if you are gonna draw it, maybe get a colored pencil to do that. Um, and maybe use blue, since most of this is blue. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and get out, most of this canvas is blue. So let's go ahead and get out our blue. I'm gonna get my phthalo blue. My white, a lot of this is white. To be honest most of the background it looks blue but most of it's white because of how much white is in the blue to make it um, to make it lightened up and I'm gonna put both of these blue like turquoises on here whoops <laughs> do you guys see what just it just like fell out of my face uh, that's a lot of blue and I can't really put it back it's fine and I'm gonna get my aqua green hopefully it doesn't pour out of this okay Let's get a little bit of that I probably have way too much paint on my my palette at this point but that's okay it happens <laughs> um, do you guys ever do that you're like trying to get a color like a certain amount and then it's just like bleh everywhere okay so what one thing that I really like to do especially in beginner classes is a lot of beginners especially with acrylics because they dry so fast a lot of beginners have troubles with blending raise your hand if you have troubles blending um, it's very common you're not alone um, 
So one thing I like to do to help those who have troubles with it blend better is to pre-blend your colors. Now, you don't have to do this, but if you are, if you're new to blending colors um, and acrylics, it is very helpful. One thing I forgot to go over is brushes. I have a brush kit linked below, it's in my store. It's something I recommend. It's $20 or less on Amazon, depending on where you are. Um, it has a variety of a variety of brushes. Um, something that I like to do is use the brushes that most people have, and most people can afford these brushes. I've had them for a year. They're very useful. I stand by them. I did a review on them a while ago. Um, I still not really a fan of the fan brush, but um, I do use most of these brushes and they're great. Um, I will be using the filbert brush. The reason I use the large filbert versus a flat brush is because when I am blending, I find that the I find that I there's less brush marks um, versus using a flat brush you have corners so when you're when you're you know when you're trying to blend you have you're leaving corners everywhere versus this I can I can just do soft um, blending and I have less of that if at all um, obviously if you don't have a filbert brush that's totally fine you can I used a flat brush for years um, but in blending it is very helpful in my opinion um, let's go ahead and block in where everything's going. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. I think, I think I'm going to move mine a little bit. I like pre-drew it on here, but I'm thinking that I, I don't want it quite in the middle of where it is. So I might move it over a little bit, which is something I can do. Um, so if you are drawing this on again, like I said, you're going to want to use a, um, like a colored pencil or something like that. Um, but if you want to do what I'm doing, you're going to get a small round brush and you're going to pre-mix just a color that you that you want to use um, I would say I'm gonna make mine a little bit darker so that you can see it on camera um, but make it only as dark as you need it you need to see it if that makes sense and then the trick is to add some water to it so that it goes on very easily. So the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out where my horizon line is. Because if you see, the palm tree follows that horizon line and you can't see it on the right side. So we're gonna put in the horizon line first. And it's about a third of your canvas. So again, you can come back later. This doesn't have to be super straight. It's just to block it in. Um, you can come back later and use tape for your actual line. Okay, this is just to give reference. Um, we have the... And you can place this any point you want. I think the, um, I think the, in the original photo, it's more of like a fourth. Um, but I want to have a little bit more ocean in my view. Um, a little bit more like maybe sand ocean. Um, so I'm adding, I'm at, that's what I'm doing. I'm adding a little bit more. So I'm just putting it in there. And then, because I know where my line is here, I'm going to place
this. And the great thing about doing this pre, like, pre-drawing, pre-painting right here is that you can change your mind. So for instance, this first thing that I drew was very, very large. <laughs> um, and I want to make sure that it's not that large. And so I can just come back with a slightly darker color and place in my, like the, the like where I actually want it. I'm gonna have it just a little bit thicker maybe right here and f as for the tree it's better to be too it's better to be too thick or sorry it's better to be too thin than too thick because if we do the background we do the ocean we do the sand the tree is the last thing to go in. If it's too thin, we can always make it thicker. We can't really make it thinner. So err on the side of a thinner tree and you can always, you can always make it thicker, okay? Um, and this is gonna be the optional stage um, where you can put in all your little branches right now. I would say that's unnecessary. I don't think you need to. Um, I did briefly, I did briefly with my, um, with my drawing, but I'm just gonna erase it because I don't think it's necessary. Because again, we're not really trying to copy it exactly. Plus I moved my tree, so there's that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is the base of it. I think I might move, see this is this is the thing. At any time you can move your things. So I'm actually gonna move my, I'm gonna move my, sand down a little bit. Just gonna move it down a little bit and I think it comes further over so it goes all the way to the corner there hi Carolyn yeah if you haven't said hi in the comments yet say hi where are you from where are you painting from are you painting with anybody other than us um, and while everybody, um, if you're done with this stage, let me know and we can move on to the background. Um, while everybody's doing that, um, I have a community on Facebook um, that you can share all of your artwork with. Um, so, uh, let's see. I think I, I said I said last week or a few weeks ago that I started doing a night bot thing community let's see if it works um and so i have it should come up with a link for that um but i have a artist community where you can share your art and your lovely artwork from all of my classes um i love seeing what you guys create and all that jazz so um definitely head over there and join that group I will be posting at the end of this class. I will be I will be posting my work in an album, and then you can just add your um, work to that album. So um, let me know if you're done drawing, and we can go ahead and move on. Um, let's go ahead while while you guys are doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and start to pre mix my colors um, now we have our white obviously that's going to be for mostly here in some of the clouds 
but then it starts to go into a really nice colors. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of this white and a touch of, you could do like greenish. I'm using the aqua, it's like the aqua color. Oh, it's off, it's off to the side, you can't see it. Um, I'm using this color. Here, let me, let me move this. There we go. So I have this like greenish aqua color. Um, I'm gonna use that with my white. You're just watching tonight. Well, hopefully you get to paint it soon. Okay, so I think this is a beautiful color for right off of that horizon. You go white right into that pretty kind of greenish color. I'm gonna make just a tad bit more so that I have something to um, blend into. A trick um, for blending is to not go, so let's say I'm blending right now, okay? I have my white, I, I see about three to four-ish colors in the sky. You have your white, your kind of whitish green color, like the medium middle color here, and then the darker blue up here. Um, for, for those four colors, you want to overlap them when you are blending. It's not just going to be white and the white stops here and then the green stops here and then the other color stops here. You want to be overlapping them so that they all blend together. Um, and something that we're doing right now is by pre-mixing these colors, it will definitely help that process, but you still have to overlap them. All right. And I'm using, I'm using a palette knife to mix my colors. I use this in almost every class now. I don't know why I didn't start doing this like years ago, um, but it saves me paint because I'm not getting them all that paint stuck in a paintbrush and then I have to just rinse it out. And it also keeps, it saves my, um, my water from getting milky before I even start painting. So that's also a plus. Um, I just watching tonight, restricted to bed with bad back. Oh, I hope you feel better. Um, oh, Tina, yes, you're the one that posted the picture. Yes, thank you for letting us use it. I'm really excited to, I'm really excited to paint it. Um, okay, so I'm going to wipe this off. And now I'm going to grab the same colors, my white, a little bit more green. It's not green, it's like my, my like, aqua color. I'm gonna grab some turquoise and mix that together. So the trick is to keep the same color palette. So keep the same colors. So instead of going, um, for instance, if I'm, you know, blending into those colors, instead of going straight into the blue or like the teal and white um I'm still adding a little bit of that green because that green hue is what I'm blending out of does that make sense so you want to keep those transitions so for the next one I don't need the green because I'm transitioning from the green colors into the blue colors and I already have a transition color with that green in it so this is our transition color I do need to make a lot more though And I'm just going to, I'm going to grab a ton of white. And what I'm going to do is I'm really going to mix a lot of these colors. I'm, I'm being conservative, but in all reality, most of the background are these colors. Because we're going to be using, reusing all of these colors that we're creating for the sky for the ocean. So I'm going to backtrack a little and create a lot more of these colors. And this is so that I don't have to pre-mix a whole bunch 
later on. Honestly, I already have these colors on my palette. <laughs> so I might as well mix them up and get to using them. <laughs> Okay, now I'm gonna take my turquoise blue, a little bit of my phthalo blue, and my white, a little bit of white. And that's gonna be my darker color. Now I think this is a little bit too dark. You could see the contrast between this one and this one it's a little bit too much of a contrast versus these are like fairly close together so i need more white in it And just to stay in the same color palette, I think I am going to just add a smidge of this green, of the aqua color. But bear in mind, um, this is just going to be the very essence of like the corner. Um, and then it's mostly gonna be the ocean. So this is mostly the ocean color because this dark color comes for most of this bottom section. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this off and I'm going to premix some of this lighter green color so that I have more of it because I'm going to be um, I'm going to be using it for down here as well. <laughs> I want to paint that ice cream pug. <laughs> You're saying for in acrylics or watercolor? Because I definitely don't feel like I know enough about watercolors to teach watercolors, but that might be fun to do in acrylics. Oh, which reminds me, um, I now have over a hundred patrons, which is crazy. So I started my Patreon last October, so it's been a year. Um, it's been almost a year and I have a hundred patrons, which was like one of my goals, you know, the patron has you put goals on here. Um, and, um, and a hundred was one of them. So starting next month, um, to make sure that it like stays at a hundred, uh, sometimes it dips at the end of the month and then it'll kind of go back up. But I think, um, by next month. I'll have consistently 100 patrons, um, which means I will be giving out a private lesson for free for all of my patrons. Um, and it's like one of my goals. Um, like, and then I'm also I'm also giving away a ton of canvases to a charity. So if you'd like to have influence on where I donate them, um, I'll probably do like 25 plus canvases depending I have a lot of canvases and they're taking up space and I'm just like I need to just give these away and I would love to give it to a charity so if you want um if you want a say in where I gift those um you can join the patreon family and do that and then also I'm also giving away a private lesson um so I will be raffling off that next month so if you're not part of the patreon family and you want to become no better time to do that okay so i have my three colors obviously i have my white too which i will get more out i go through white anyone else go through white so fast okay um you have your white your off color like your greenish white your medium color and then your darker blue so these are going to be all of our ocean and sky colors. So you should have a good amount of them. 
Um, hi, Lindsay. Uh, yes. Oh, I mean, you're the only one commenting, so of course I see it. Um, you've never done you've never done like an online paint night class before. Live ones are always, I think, more fun because you get to interact with people and either the commenters or the people who are teaching. Anyways, okay, let's go ahead and get out whatever brush that you're using for the background. So that could be a flat brush, a larger brush. I'm using the 15 um, filbert brush that comes in that kit. Um, and we're gonna get it wet, get your brush wet dab it just so it's not dripping. We're going to grab some white, start off with white. And the trick to this is, again, the trick to this is to go higher so that you can overlap them. Okay. So the green color goes to about here. So your white is going to go, is going to overlap that. You see that? So just keep that in mind when you're painting. I'm just going to add white and if you have a canvas where you have sides don't forget to paint the sides some people don't paint the sides um, which is totally a personal choice and you don't have to but I like to do that so then I don't have to worry about painting I don't have to worry about um, framing it I can just put it right on the wall and I'm gonna put a little bit of white over here so because I, I pre-drew this, I don't have to worry about like going over it, at least with white and like these lighter colors. So now I'm gonna go straight into my lighter color. I'm gonna start up higher, get my main color where I want it. For instance, I know I want it here and over here. And then, because there's already white here, this line, just go over it. Go over it a bunch of times. Don't rinse your brush out. Bring down that color into that white. Go up and down. Uh, when I say go up and down, don't go your strokes up and down, but go a very long strokes and I'm just bringing that color into that white. And we will come back and put in our, um, our clouds. So then you're gonna take this green sorry, the, the white green concoction, and you're gonna go up higher than you want it to go. Again, because we're gonna overlap. we're going to overlap so now you have that and we're gonna grab the next color remember you're going to put it above where you want it okay And you're going to slowly start bringing that down. And if you find that it, it's a little bit more of a contrast than you anticipated, go back and grab some of that lighter color and put it right on that seam. And sometimes you can do things like this, where it's kind of mixing together a little bit. And then I'm gonna rinse out my brush because I still know that I have a lot of that darker color in there. I'm gonna rinse it out, dry it off so it's not dripping wet. And I'm going to just work in, in long strokes. 
I'm gonna work in that color, that seam. And the more you go over something when you're blending, the more it's going to blend. And if you feel like you need any extra color of something, you can just go back into that color and add it. So for instance, if you need more of the, the light color to help blend it in, go back into that light color. More often than not, it'll probably be the light color that you need because darker colors tend to dominate. And you'll just keep doing that until you like the blend. And I can go back into this kind of darker color up here. Make sure I get the top. If, w if you're ever having trouble blending, you can just grab a tiny bit of water and then grab your paint and that will help your paint move on the canvas. Try, to, I would say to try not, try never to go from water straight to canvas without either dabbing it off or putting it in your paint first. That can be dangerous because then you're just putting water straight on your canvas and it can drip and it can get everywhere and that's bad. Okay, so because the sky is mostly this color, I'm gonna go all the way up to the corner or just before the just before the corner with this color. Grab a little bit of water. Now I can grab the darkest color that I have. And pull it from the corner. and blend it in, just pulling that down and then slowly blending it in. I didn't know if you meant exact. <laughs> I wasn't gonna read it out loud because I was like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but yeah, I think the perfect, I think the, the colors came out pretty, pretty perfect. I, I like them. Just finishing up the sides because some of them Okay, 
So now we are at a point where we can start adding our clouds. Um, you can do this in a couple different ways. You could do this with a small round brush or like a medium round brush or you could use a small filbert brush. Well, the one thing I like about the filbert brush, we might use both. The one thing I like about the filbert brush is that it naturally has a round um, tip to it. So if you're not really sure about, you know, creating these different shades, it's a great um, starting place. So I'll start off with that. And we can just start over here. We're just creating the basic shapes of it right now. We're not adding anything to it. And I'm just putting it, I'm putting it on the, just the tip of my brush and then just kind of moving it around. Hi, Linda. I'm kind of just moving it around. And automatically that creates this like just by placing it on there and then moving it around it creates that. Maybe some of the distance a little bit more subtle. I have barely any paint on my brush. put one up here and ideally it's it's really nice to do this when the paint is still a little bit wet like this because then you can blend out the bottom a little bit easier add a little bit a little one behind the tree right there and then a little one right here The trick for doing some of these is really to have, like, when you think you have barely any paint on your brush, that is when you do a cloud, like up here. Because any, any white that you put in this area is going to pop out, um, which if you want them to pop out, that's totally fine. But for the more subtle clouds, um, you can always come back in and add some of that pop like that but it's good to start off with a little bit more subtlety a little bit more of a of a wisp you can even add some like that and there's even one way up here which you don't have to add, but it's kind of softening it up a little bit. Yes, Stacy, I know. Congratulations. And thank you. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun in there. Um, Stacy said that she joined my Patreon today, um, which I'm super thankful for. So thank you for that. Um, yeah. So for the $5 tier, you get access to my art challenges, um, traceables and some other things um, for the seven dollar tier um, you get access to literally every class that I've ever painted in patreon um, so that's great and we have a couple we have a couple really fun ones I haven't posted them on um, social media yet but I have posted them in patreon so you get some sneak peeks on what's coming um, but I'm excited I'm excited. 
Um, maybe I'll, I'll sneak peek what one of them is. One of them is a tiger. And I'm really excited about the tiger. And there's also other tiers too. Like in the highest tier, um, my cobalt tier, I do a private like Zoom class. So it's almost like a group, a group private um, with everybody else who's in that tier. So I think there's four right now. Um, so we have fun and get to paint really whatever we want. You guys get to choose. Or they get to choose. But, okay. Um, you could probably paint all day with clouds. So let me know. <laughs> let me know when you're at a place where you're good. Um, if you want to add a little bit of a um, of a low light to give a little bit of definition. Um, whoa. You're going to add two white ever so slightly, a little bit of your blue and the smallest amount of black. And this is to dole it out. So this is this is the color I'm going to use, but I'm going to add a ton more white to it because it's very very subtle. So it's like a blue gray. See, I think I need even more white. It's very very subtle, but this is if you have time, if if you have time and you still want to and you want to add a little bit of. Um, A little bit of low light. To your clouds. And try to only add, if you are adding a, a like a shadow, try to only add them to the right side. Because that's the only place that there would be a shadow. And if you put too much shadow, you can always come back and add, add back in your, your highlights, your bright white. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. I think I'm done with the, the sky. All right, so for everything else, we're gonna go ahead and do our horizon line. So grab yourself a piece of tape if you have it. Figure out where your horizon line is. I think the biggest thing would be to make sure that it's straight. Getting a bird 
bird's eye view. Is that straight? Sometimes I can't tell. So I'm, <laughs> I view it from like the angle. So sometimes I'm like, I can't tell if it's straight. I'm not looking at it straight on. Okay, I think, I think that's straight. So I'm just going to make sure that the bottom of that is, the whole thing doesn't need to be like, you know, taped down. It's really just that bottom. Make sure it goes all the way around. All right, now for the, um, for the ocean, it's gonna be a little bit of a different process. Um, there, we're gonna do two different coats. So one is gonna be the base coat, the base colors, and then we're going to be adding detail on top of that, okay? So go ahead and grab your darker color, darker pre-mixed color, and go right along. Don't go up, because you don't wanna squish paint up the, um, up into the, into the painter's tape. If anything, you wanna go down or right along that. Okay, I'm gonna go right into a little bit more of that lighter color. It's a little bit lighter on the left side, so I'm going to blend that in a little bit. Again, just getting base colors. Um, then there's like a wave right here, so there's a little bit of a darker shade. And then I'm going to rinse out my brush because most of the most of the colors down here are going to be these lighter undertones. So I'm going to do. I'm putting in that lighter, the lightest white green color over here. And I'm not touching this blue thing because once I touch that, it's gonna blend together. And I don't want it to blend yet. And it gets a little bit darker on the way over here. So I'm gonna grab this medium, the medium color that we um, mixed together. And I can start mixing that into the blue. Mix it into this lighter color. And I'm going to turn my brush sideways so that I can just mix right here. Because honestly, I want to go in with my white because it's really white right here. And don't worry if the colors aren't exactly where they need to be. We'll be, um, 
we'll be changing them. We'll be adding, you know, we'll be adding details as we go. And I'm kind of going in straight to my green a little bit um, when it comes to over here because there's a little bit more of that greenish color. So I'm just blending that in. Now while this is drying, we're not going to take the tape off yet because we have to put in like the details up here before we take it off. Um, we're going to go ahead and mix together our sand color. So that is going to be your yellow, reds, and browns colors. I'm going to start off, I'm going to put a little bit of brown on here. Oops, that was a lot of brown, but that's okay. Um, it's mostly going to be yellow and white with a little bit of brown and a tad bit of yellow, depending on the different colors that you're using. And um, you should specify if you're painting the top or bottom of tap when you put it on. Tap? Tape, you mean? The top, uh, the tape. Yes, I am painting on the bo on the bottom of the tape because everything above the tape is finished. So for the rest of this, I'm not painting anything above the tape. I hope that. I'm sorry if anybody assumed I was talking about the bottom, the top of the tape, <laughs> um, because that's where that line was. Um. So let's go ahead and mix together. Again, it's going to be mostly yellow and white. Where'd my palette knife? I should say mostly white because it's a pretty, it's a pretty light color. I definitely have too much yellow. So I should say it's mostly white with a touch of yellow. The sand is light. Okay, so I have this light yellow that you can barely see because it's on the edge of my canvas or it's on the edge of my palette. Um, it's very light. It's a very pale yellow. I'm going to add a dab of brown to it. And this will tone back that brightness of the yellow. Work in small amounts. So when I say like a touch of brown, like it means literally barely touch your brown. <laughs> Alright, so you can see that it's now sand color but it's a little bit on the like I want to say dirty um like tone so what you're going to do is you're just going to grab a touch of yellow 
I mean, uh, sorry, of red, and we're going to warm it up. And if you add too much red, and it's looking too red, then you can add, um, you can add a little bit more of yellow to counteract it. I'm just gonna play around with those colors. I think, I think I want a little bit more of yellow sand. I got a good color. So then after you get that the color that you want, you're just going to add it to this section. I'm going to get the bottom here real fast. And I don't have to worry too much about this line because I am going to be covering um, the line with um, with white. So I don't have to worry about making it super straight or whatever the process is. I did feel that my colors were a little bit too dark, so I just added white as I was going, and that helped to lighten it up a little bit. I 
but we'll be adding we'll be adding texture to the um, beach so um, and then right here since it is a little bit close we can see a little bit of that um, transition from beach to water so grab a little bit of your beachy color and your aqua color that light aqua color and mix it together and you're just going to paint a little bit of a sliver on this corner Honestly, that's optional, but when you put in your foam, you'll put it where the sand ends and not where that, uh, that color that we just put in, because that's going to be under the water. It's, you're still going to see the sand, but because the water's on it, it's a little bit more blue. Just little details. Okay, so now that this blue is, um, it is dry, we're going to add some details. So with whatever color you're using, you're going to just lighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to rinse out my big brush. You can use a smaller brush if you would like to. Totally fine. Um, if you want to use a liner brush, you could do that. I'm fairly confident with my large brush. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my darkest color, which is what I used here, and add a little bit of white and I'm just gonna start adding little streaks that's not light enough so I know I need to go whiter And these are to add the ripples in the waves. You can also add darker lines if you want to. get out my liner brush just so I can be a little bit more um, specific and if you have a liner brush and would like to use it I would just say to Make sure to um, make your lines straight across, at least for this section. Okay, I'm 
going to get some white and put it right at the top here of this wave. So I kind of know where I know where my wave is. come in with this deep uh, kind of greenish color um, so I can darken up I can darken up where the wave is And then you can blend it out if you need to. You can do this by grabbing just a touch of water. I'm constantly kind of just wiping off the color so that I can manipulate it. And then we start to come into a lot more of this white. Um, for instance, there's a lot of white over here. So we're just going to place some white. I'm just using my round, um, just my round brush. adding it kind of wherever I see clumps of it but we'll be adding detail in a little bit so I got my brush wet and then I dried it off just a little bit and I'm just kind of blending in some of the harsher lines that I created and I'm gonna come back in with my white and create this foam at the base here and remember you want to put it where your where your um, original line ends
I'm kind of just repeating that process. Adding adding my, my pure white here at the top and here at the bottom where it starts. I'm gonna create a dark tone to give a little bit of shadow to this front wave. Kind of like what we did for the um, the clouds. Except I'm using brown and not black. adding a little bit of detail here and there. Alright, so this next part is kind of fun. Um, you're going to grab a small brush or liner brush um, and add in all the little foamy details in the front here. It's easier with a liner brush, but it can be done without one. So it's like, think about making like veins or tree branches, just like a whole bunch of wiggly, squiggly lines that go from go from here to there and in this instance layers is better so it's they're be it's better to have them like light like you know you can always add layers like add more And don't forget that as you come over here, they're going to go sideways more. So the ones over here are going to go that direction. And I know that this is like a very tedious process, but it definitely makes a difference and it makes it more look it look makes it look more realistic. So if realism, if realistic, you know, is kind of what you're going for, which we are basing this off of a picture, then it's good to have all those little wiggly lines.
so that is pretty much the end of the um, I think I'm done with the water which means I am good to take off my tape just gonna make sure that this is all okay so now you can take off your tape Um, and if you need to fix any line, uh, what's nice is that because we used pretty much pure white for the horizon line, you can fix any, any line with white. We are going to add a little bit of detail to the sand real fast. So I'll be just taking some of this white and mixing it a little bit with the sand color so I have like more of like a highlight color. And just adding little bits of texture. with the light color and then I'm also going to make a slightly darker color Oops. Um, I added just a touch of brown And you can add that to a little bit right underneath your, your wave if you want. Then you're also going to add it as texture to the rest of the sand.
I'm just going to keep adding that texture until you like the overall look of it. And I will say that if you are looking at your sand and you're like, what am I even doing? I don't see it. Take, take a couple steps back. Like get up, like and actually physically get up and step back and um, look at it from a couple feet away. I promise you, you'll you'll like it better. <laughs> Sometimes just getting a further view of it and taking a couple steps back really helps. Right. But with that said, we are going to move on to the tree. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to spend the last half an hour on this tree. Um, and we're going to take our brown. And I'm just going to go right in the middle here. And you're essentially going to fill in where your lines are. And then you can make any adjustments from there. But the minimum is covering up your lines. I think that's pretty good. I'm going to I want to come down a little bit and make it a little bit thicker down here.
by making it so much bigger at the base, it's giving the illusion that it's getting closer and that's what we want. Now, if you want to add a little bit of detail to the, 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 the part that's closer, um, you could grab a brush that has an edge and add some bumps. You're going to do that on the bottom and the top. So I'm going to turn this around. Just so I can. necessarily think the size of the brush matters um, I mean definitely it can make a difference if you have a larger canvas um, but for something like this just whatever whatever brush um, has a corner to it you can use And then just make sure that the bumps get smaller and closer together and then eventually fade out because it's too far away to have detail. Okay, while that dries we're going to take our liner brush with our brown Again, if you don't have a liner brush, you can just use whatever small brush you have. And I'm going to use my left hand for balance. Place my right hand on top of it, or you can do vice versa if you're um, ambidextrous. And I'm going to put in all of these. Um, I'm going to put in all of these lines. I don't have to go all the way, but just the general direction. The trick is to have a good amount of water so that it flows nicely. And then also make sure that you have some that are close together. Like they're not all going to be the same length or um, the same like width apart.
They're going to be overlapping. And then there's a couple coming forward that we will um, go into a little bit more, you know, detail with. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. You can use a fan brush if you have a fan brush that you like. You can put in each individual thing, <laughs> which um, if you have the time, that will look the best. Um, but for right now, we are going to use either you can either use a fan brush um, or you can use, um, I like using a filbert brush. But again, if you have the time, then by all means use your liner brush and just put on some music and go for it. <laughs> um, but first we need to mix up our green. So I have my phthalo blue. If you have a green that you want to use that's totally fine you can do that. I'm going to mix what I have here. Um, so I'm going to mix my my yellow with my phthalo blue and get some green I think I am going to use my pale green from Hippie Crafter just to brighten it up just ever so slightly. But again, use what you have. You don't have to use what I'm using. Just whatever green you have. Um, the first green, however, that we are going to be putting on the canvas is going to be a very dark one. So I'm going to be mixing um, a little bit of brown with this green. With um, I kind of separated them. I have my green and then I have um, a, a part of that green that I'm darkening. I think I might add just a little bit. Uh, well, I think that's fine. Okay, so the first, uh, the first tone of this is going to be that dark green. Um, I'm just going to add it to this whole middle section because I know that it's going to be fully covered up. And I don't want to have to worry about it. Not the not the parts that go out, but just up. Because it's really full on top. Um, so then you can start adding your leaves. Um, so depending on what method you're using, um, I'm using the filbert brush method. Which works a little bit like this.
I have it flat and I'm, I'm I usually start at the tip and it goes like that like that and you can just start adding that detail um, allow them to overlap so put in a couple let it dry and then go in with another one and overlap them. And this specific palm tree, all of most of them are kind of like going up versus a lot going down. You can do either. It's totally up to you. What's nice about using this method is that if I need to come back and add more detail with a liner brush, I kind of already have like the base color here that I can just go based off of. And if you're finding that you're not getting a whole lot of like individual lines with your strokes, try and add just a little bit of water, just a little bit. And that will help kind of separate those.
going back in, more green, tiny bit more water. There's one over here that has a little bit of a red tone to it. These ones might be, maybe they're dying a little bit, so they have a little bit more of a yellow tone to it. You can add one of those. Alright, so that's pretty much the main color and now you're just going to add in your low lights and your highlights. So I'm going to add my low lights first and add more brown to the screen um, and uh, just a little bit of black to really get that darkness in there. And we're going to run just a little bit over two hours just so we can get in a little bit more of this detail. Because the palm tree is the main thing. I grabbed the wrong size filbert. And the reason that we're putting in some of these darknesses right now is so that we can put in a couple of the front ones. And there's a little bit of contrast.
So I'm just darkening up some of these, especially the ones over here that like aren't really in the sun. And then we're going to have our highlight. Which is going to be our yellow mixed with a little bit of green. And you can use the same method. Um, I think I'm going to come in with a fan brush. This may be a mistake because I don't like my fan brush. <laughs> but the point is you want to get the ends you want to get the ends of them and I think I need even more yellow I might just come in with my liner brush and get some of those tips. And so I'm just going over and putting some yellowish green over some of the tips. Uh, let's see. Deborah asks, I bought some paper to practice acrylic painting. Do you recommend I coat with gesso first? I've heard, um, I haven't actually done it, but I've heard that coating it with gesso can help the the paint not get absorbed into the paper as much um so i mean my honestly i would say do one with and do one without and see the difference see how it affects it since i can't actually give advice based off of experience.
And then I used um, part of this sand color to just add a couple of um, uh, like stems coming out from the base. And then I'm going to paint this part black. Alright, so moving down, I'm going to bring this black down a little bit. And then we still have to add some um, texture. So you're going to grab your brown and your tan color. and mix that together and it'll create a highlight color that you can use for your base texture. I'm going to grab a smaller medium round brush And start to add this texture. It's kind of like a checker formation a little bit. And when it gets past like this area, it kind of gets too dark to see that um, texture. So you could probably just not do texture on that side. And then once you do that coat, you can come back and add a little bit of a lighter coat. I'm just using my brush a little bit of an angle to create little tiny triangles.
if you had more time you could be very detailed with it and really specifically place all of these But yeah, it's pretty much, again, the ones that are closest to you are going to be the most detailed. And as it add a little bonus of detail, you can take a little bit of brown and your sand color and give some highlights to the trunk, like the base. Um, to some of these. brings brings them out a little bit And yeah, that is that is pretty much it. Let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else left to do. I could put a couple more here in the front if I wanted to, but I think maybe I'll just add... This one that's like right here. bit of that yellowish green but yeah thank you so much for joining me um we're gonna wrap it up i'm gonna go ahead and sign my name here in the corner let's see i'm gonna sign it in the right corner i feel like that's more appropriate there you go I can't wait to see everybody's paintings um, as always please um, go over to the um, 
go over to Samantha Anderson artist group page on Facebook and share your work. I would love to see it. Um, but yeah, until next time, I will be live in two weeks and we'll get to paint again. All right. I hope you all have a wonderful night or morning or whenever you're painting, but see you guys.